di e eh, news update for for kra de ba beso mu abusia question we e pie mu na dr mohammed baumia e eh, kan de se he won't comment on that e eh, san se ono on te no nya we abusia ni nyina e eh, question a journalist ba ko e eh, busa ya na opeso wo kire se john dramani mahama e eh, be mu e eh, wo western north for baby opeso wo kire se koko board is on the verge of collapsing na no eh, ni e busa dr mohammed baumia any wa men se west o kan pain se wono enya de se obebi na no na comment on that question eno wono so so enya de se wo ya we ebusia me pe se ebekwa ko tie wono ankasa na eto so mienu so so eye na no ya okese question a wo busa no pe se wo kire se wo kire mu a wo se o ba obeyi taxes bebre every hono ebi ni e levy na no eno so wo busa dr mohammed baumia se eni e e de enti eno wo aban mu no wo ka aban no ho no ye vice president onyi sa taxes no e firi ho abusia eno so so wo de no yi e ba ya me pese e be ko akwa kuti eni ko jo sheldon eno so question a wo busa aye e fa pharmaceutical doctors a o ma ye o ma dwen se o mu see health ministry no e san se o mu wo allowances bi a e ya de se health ministry no enti aye abusia ye enti ni mra the former president mahama on his campaign tour in western north region claim Cocoa board is on the verge of collapse. Do you believe Cocoa board has collapsed? And what is your plans for Cocoa board? Um, Cocoa board is on the verge of collapse. Um, I'm not. I'm not aware of that. Uh, but uh, we'll, we will. We'll, we'll look at that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I cannot comment on that. Um, it's, it's not. Um, I, I don't know where the data is coming from. My name is Nana Yakesi. I work with PSFM. You have promised abolishing birth tax, e-levy, flat, import duty, one-time tax amnesty, among others. If you really believe that that is what Ghana needs, why should we wait till you become the president and not implement it now? Was that we wanted to do these tax reforms, import duty, flat tax, tax amnesty, and so on. But why don't I do it now? And, and why do I want to? I must have a manifesto, otherwise if I do everything now, <laughs> if I could, <laughs> what would I do when I come into office? <laughs> I mean, how can you do everything now? Um, uh, even President Mahama, former president, who, is, who was president, I'm only vice president, but he was president. Why didn't he do everything then? <laughs> I mean, why is he coming back? He had full authority. I don't have full authority. The budget that has gone to parliament, which has been passed, is not my budget. Is it my budget? It's not my budget. The budget goes in the name of the president. It doesn't go in the name of the vice president. But when you have to think about what new do you want to do, you come up with new ideas. And I've come up with new ideas, which I want to do when we come into office. Everyone who is running for office, whether you are Kamala Harris or you are Baumia, you still have to think about what you have to do when you get into office. And this is why I'm presenting my new ideas uh, as to what to do. Um, before I proceed to ask my questions, I would like to um, emphatically state that these questions were not given to me by anyone here. <laughs> um, they are from my head, so I'm going to ask. Now, uh, Mr. Vice President, my name is Kojo Sheldon. I represent Kojo Sheldon Studios. Um, the first one is about 322 pharmaceutical doctors uh, on social media right now are planning on suing the health ministry uh, about unpaid you know, allowances. Now, for someone that has highlighted in your manifesto that when voted into power, you are going to you know, improve or help improve the condition of services when it comes to or conditions of service when it comes to our health people. For right now that you are the vice president, what can you do to help these pharmaceutical, you know, uh, doctors who are, you know, contemplating on suing uh, the Ministry of, you know, Health? My second question borders. No, no, could you? Oh, oh, oh. Don't do that to me. Mr. Rao, Mr. Rao. Mr. Rao, Mr. Rao. Mr. Rao, Mr. Rao. Oh, no, no. See, the question is. One question. Oh, boy. One, one. 
One question. So my question, question, the second question is you about don't, perception. Don't do that. Boss. Don't do that. Oh, bro. Don't do that. The, 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 I the, didn't allow Bella. Perception is very, very, very important. I'll come back to you. The pharmacists are my very good friends. Um, we, we, but you're talking about 322 pharmaceutical doctors who are threatening to sue the Ministry of Health for their allowances. Um, again, I, I want to take this one up. I'm, uh, this is the first time I'm hearing about this particular issue. Uh, I think it is Sheldon who raised it. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not aware of it, but I think it's an important issue um, that we, we should really um, resolve. Um, so we'll, we'll talk to the Ministry uh, of Health and, and Finance. Uh, thank you very much. So my, my question is coming from a group of students on scholarship abroad. They are concerned that the scholarship secretariat is not doing what it has to do for them. At page 27 of your manifesto, you speak about harmonizing public uh, scholarships. And there's a purpose for it. You say the purpose is to give full visibility. Beyond the visibility, what will you do about this? now and not later. They, they are some of them for 20 months, they have not received their stipends. In a number of universities in the UK, in Warwick, Coventry, Nottingham, they are under threat of losing their studentship. In Birmingham, 11 of them have already been withdrawn and they are facing deportation. Will you inquire, particularly knowing about the Fourth Estate's investigations dubbed scholarship bonanza, about what appears to be a racketeering in that place? And will you forbid and prohibit politically exposed persons wealthy enough, known in society, I think from accessing the, these thank scholarships. You, Samson. Thank you. I think the question is very well. Samson uh, talked about the scholarship uh, students and, and, and all of that. And I think this is a very, very important issue. Um, there's nothing more heart wrenching than t taking a student abroad and not being able to take care of them um, in, 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 in those circumstances. And I think that. Um, I believe, and this is what we are saying, that one needs to, first of all, harmonize these databases so that you have full visibility and transparency. Um, and, and also, uh, we, we have undertaken in the manifesto to publish all the beneficiaries of, of all of these uh, scholarships as they come so that everybody knows who is getting the scholarships and so on, um, and again, uh, I've been I'm been made very aware of this issue. It's not um, it's not new um, because students have even and parents have gotten in touch with me uh, about the awards and, and and the scholarships and so on. So we're talking with the uh, Ministry of Finance and the Scholarship Secretariat. Uh, I think they were able to to make some payments to, to some of the UK students and so on. But we will follow up on that because it's very urgent. Um, the first question had to do with NAPCO, um, the Nation Builders Corps and the areas that um, have been owed um, to, to NAPCO. Um, I think that the, the program had about 100,000 people on it, and I, I think initially it was supposed to be uh, a three-year program, um, and then would be renewed and so on. But I think that so far, out of the 100,000 that were taken, 34,000 have exited into permanent jobs under NAPCO, and the others 
I, uh, I still, but I think that the issue that uh, Bella raises is the arrears and, and how we are going to deal with it. I've raised this issue this, because this is not really, uh, a, a, this is some information that has come to me already about the arrears in the NAPCO program and I've raised this issue um, with the Minister for Finance um, and, and trying to, to persuade them to, to, to make uh, these arrears payments. So we will co follow that up on behalf of the, the NAPCO uh, employees. The second issue has to do with uh, providing better health care in the manifesto and the issue of cars and how these um, will affect local companies. But we will leave it open um, for discussion, and that's what we've done.